Welcome to worship. I'm Pastor Jeremy. Here we are at our Sun Tree Campus Chapel. And the reason we are here is because we want the atmosphere that we are worshiping with you in your home. In order to fully participate in worship, there's a couple of things you can prepare for. The first is uh, there's a songbook at our website, adventbrevard.org, that has the scripture and all the song lyrics to the songs we'll be singing. We we'll also will be celebrating Holy Communion together. If you'd like to do that, uh, please get out your best wine glass and fill it up with wine or grape juice. You get some type of bread as well. You can place those by you as we worship together. If you need a pause to the video to do that, please do so. And then come on back and we will begin worship with song. Even if some doors come up 
first reading comes from the book of Romans, the sixth chapter. Therefore, do not let sin exercise dominion in your mortal bodies to make you obey their passions. No longer present your members to sin as instruments of wickedness, but present yourselves to God as those who have been brought from death to life and present your members to God as instruments of righteousness. For sin will have no dominion over you, since you are not under law, but under grace. What then? Should we sin because we are not under law, but under grace? By no means. Do you know that if you present yourself to anyone as obedient slaves, you are slaves of the one whom you obey, either of sin, which leads to death, or of obedience, which leads to righteousness. But thanks be to God that you, having once been slaves of sin, have become dominant from being the heart to from the teaching to which we are entrusted. And that you, having been set free from sin, have become slaves of righteousness. I am speaking in human terms because of your natural limitations. For just as you once presented your members as slaves to impurity and to greater and greater iniquity, so now present your members as slaves to righteousness for sanctification. When you were slaves of sin, you were free in regard to righteousness. So what advantage do you then get from the things of which you now are ashamed? The end of those things is death. But now that you have been freed from sin and enslaved to God, the advantage you get is sanctification. The end is eternal life. For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Here ends the reading.
the theme of our service today, one of the themes, there's two, uh, one of them is welcome. Jesus talks about welcoming in our gospel text for today. So for the family activity, what I want you to do is talk together um, about how do you make people feel welcome? You know, when somebody comes to your door, um, how do you make them feel welcome? Especially if you're planning to have somebody over, um, do you set out hors d'oeuvres, little snacks? Do you put out drinks? Um, do you invite them to come sit? Uh, how, do you, how do you make people feel welcome and why do you make them feel welcome? I mean, why do you do the things that you do to make them feel welcome? Take a few minutes and just talk about that together as a family. Um, and if it's just you, I want you to just think through it. Maybe if you're by yourself, take a pad of paper and jot down um, what things do you do to make people feel welcome and maybe why you do them. And, uh, and later on, when we come to the sermon, we'll talk about it some more. So take a minute. If you need to pause the video, please do. And just talk with one another or make a list yourself about how you make people feel welcome.
Today's gospel is from Matthew, the 10th chapter. Jesus is speaking to his disciples, and he says, Whoever welcomes you welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. Whoever welcomes a prophet in the name of a prophet will receive a prophet's reward, and whoever welcomes a righteous person in the name of a righteous person will receive the reward of the righteous. And whoever gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones in the name of a disciple, truly I tell you, none of these will lose their reward. This is the gospel of the Lord. We're talking about two things today. Uh, both of them are a little challenging. I know this verse sounds so simple and so nice and so easy, but it's uh, we're talking about welcoming and rewards. Welcoming. How do you do that in a time of pandemic? I was thinking that even as I was doing the family activity, it's like in normal times, yeah, you'd invite people in, do snacks, whatever. Now what do you do? Here, have a mask. You know, It's challenging. How do you welcome? Um, and then rewards. The rewards have always made Lutherans very nervous. You know, whenever we hear the word reward, we picture Dr. Martin Luther himself with the Bible in his arms going, it's all grace. It's all grace. God's saved us by grace, and we can't add anything to it. We can't take any way, anything away from it. Our reconciliation with God is all by grace. So why are you talking about rewards? So uh, two things we need to talk about, both a little challenging. Um, but we're going to start with welcoming. Um, this is an interesting text uh, to pull out of context. I, I, I kind of get frustrated that they do that in a the lectionary. They always just pull out a chunk of scripture. But you may remember, if you, if you watched this last week or you were here last week, um, this comes just after um, Jesus says to his disciples, uh, you know, people are going to turn against you. They're going to reject you. Uh, I'm, I didn't come to bring peace. I came to bring a sword. And, you know, you're, even people of your own family will reject you because you follow me. Um, you'll be hated. You'll be kicked out. You won't be welcomed, is what Jesus is saying, uh, by the people who normally welcome you because of me. That's the bad news. That's the hard news. That's the hard stuff to hear. This is the good news that follows that, Right? So you're going to be rejected by all these people, but whoever does welcome you welcomes me. And whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. So what Jesus is saying in this text that is, uh, that is uplifting but hard is you may end up with new people. Uh, you might end up with new people, new family, uh, because the ones who you loved before and who loved you before might reject you when you start following me. But, and this is the good news in our passage for today, um, the ones who welcome you now, welcome you because you're a disciple, welcome you because you are following me, um, you will know that these people who are welcoming you are also welcoming me. These people uh, who are welcoming you because you, you are a disciple of mine, um, they'll receive a reward, the same reward that you will receive. Um, and it's kind of a powerful thing. The challenging thing that I ran into is as I started thinking through this, um, what does it mean to be a disciple of Jesus? Uh, it's because we're, we're going to know who these new people are by how they respond to us being a disciple of Jesus. And what it means to be a disciple of Jesus is to be the love of God in the flesh in the world. To really love your neighbor, to really love all people, no matter who they are, no matter where they come from, to be the love of God in the flesh out there in the world. That's what it means. And, um, and when you will know who your new family is by how people respond to that. Um, if you are out there with the outcasts, you're going to run into some people 
who will thank you for that and embrace you for that. If you are out there um, rubbing shoulders with and embracing with God's love um, people who are kind of on the margins and on the fringe as Christ did, um, there will be some people who will see you in that process and they'll come alongside you and say, I'm with you in this. But like Jesus said in the previous text, there are some who will not. <laughs> and, um, and I guess this whole thing about welcome is you'll, you'll recognize who your new family is. And um, I hope it's not going to be that different from the family you have. Uh, but I have to admit, the thing that's, that really uh, has been hard for me and has really kind of hurt my heart a little bit is um, as I have seen those, including myself, struggling to follow Jesus and to really be out there with people who are different, people who are on the margins, people who need God's love, um, people who are not like me, the people who welcome me aren't always uh, church folk. Um, I wish it weren't so. Uh, but sometimes, in fact, uh, I, I used to be, some of you may know, I used to be part of a very, very conservative Christian organization. And, um, and unfortunately, what I have found is sometimes uh, among people um, who are really into the absolute truth of their point of view, that my point of view is the absolute truth, and, if, and you can be a part of my family if you agree that my point of view is the absolute truth, they spend a great deal of time identifying who is not with them, you know, who they need to be against. They spend a great deal of time uh, identifying who they are against. And I don't find anything in the scripture that says we should be spending our time doing that. Um, Jesus said, follow me, be my disciple, become like me in the world, and, and then watch who welcomes you. The one who welcomes you, when you are being the love of God out there, uh, welcomes me. And the one who rejects you, rejects me. I mean, that's, that's kind of the hard truth here. And, and what I have found is, um, and I know this is going to rub some people the wrong way, but uh, when I have been trying to love uh, as God loves, and when we have been trying as a congregation to love as God loves, I have found um, people even outside of our circle. Uh, I have a good friend now, Muhammad Samara, from the uh, Islamic Society um, of Brevard County. Uh, he has welcomed me. Um, not, frankly, let's be honest, not because we understand God in the same way, not because uh, he believes in Jesus the same way I, I believe in Jesus. That's not why he welcomes me. He welcomes me because he knows I am trying to be the love of God for him. And he's trying to be the love of God for me. He welcomes me. Um, Rabbi Pat, Patricia Hickman from uh, Temple Israel, um, has become a very good friend of mine Again, not because she sees Jesus the same way I do. Uh, if she and I were to talk about who is Jesus Christ, you know, she would have a different idea about that than I do. But when I am trying to be the love of God in the flesh, in the world, when I'm trying to uh, be that, uh, she absolutely welcomes me. And... Um, and it's not because of my doctrine. It's not because of what I think or what I believe or what I would write down on a doctrine exam. It's because, as Jesus has told us over and over and over and over again, follow me. Do what I'm doing in the world. And those who welcome you when you are doing what I'm doing in the world are welcoming me. So I look at uh, Muhammad and I look at Rabbi Pat and, and so many others, uh, and I they may not realize it, but they are welcoming Jesus because they are providing love and support. See, that's another thing that's different. In our day, when you say the word welcome, 
Uh, it might mean you just aren't going to kick somebody off your, their pro off your property. Uh, it might mean you'll put out some munchies. But there's little other connection beside that. It's pretty superficial. Uh, in Jesus' day, to welcome someone was a very serious thing. You know, you, you after traveling for a long way, uh, you would take them into your home. You would offer them support. You would say, I'm with you. I'm, I embrace you. Uh, Welcome was a much deeper thing in those days. And, um, and it is absolutely true um, that I, I have seen my idea of who is a part of my family on this earth broadened tremendously as I thought about this concept of welcome. And Jesus said, the one who welcomes you welcomes me. Man, that has expanded because I have seen people who don't understand God the same way that I do, absolutely welcome me when I am trying to be who Christ has called me to be in this text. Um, so this idea of welcome is a real eye-opening thing, and that's what Jesus said. He said it would be. You know, the ones who welcome you when you are doing what I have asked you to do are welcoming me. Um, interesting thing to think about. Um, the second thing, the rewards, I love this because it isn't something that Luther would be worried about at all. It's not talking about earning your salvation. It's not talking about the brownie points you get for doing what God has asked you to do. This is such a cool thing. Um, what reward does a disciple get? A disciple of Jesus, someone who's really following Jesus, gets to experience what it is like to be the love of God in the world. That is, you, there's no amount of money. There's nothing that you could give somebody that is as powerful and beautiful and joyful and eternal as that. When you go out that door and you are being the love of God in the world, um, that in itself is as much reward as anybody could handle. It's incredible. Um, same thing about prophecy. When you are out there in a loving, kind, spirit-filled way saying, this is what God says about these situations, that's all prophecy is. Thus says the Lord, you know. This is what God says in, in these situations. When you're saying that filled with the love of Christ, um, there is no better reward than being the love of God out there. Um, same thing with righteousness. When you are living rightly, that's what righteousness is. You are living as the love of God out there in the world. Um, the greatest reward you could possibly get is that itself. Experiencing being the love of God out there in the world. It's just amazing. And what Jesus said is, whoever welcomes you, whoever uh, you know, welcomes a prophet, whoever welcomes a righteous person, um, will receive that reward. Well, it's clear if you think about it. Put on your Sherlock Holmes for a minute. Sherlock Holmes uh, vibe. Um, what are they doing when they are welcoming you? They are being the love of God in the world. Uh, they are being the love of Christ at that moment. So if they're welcoming you because you're a disciple, they are being the love of Christ at that moment. They get to feel that love. When they're welcoming you because you're a prophet, they get to feel that love by their support of you, and they welcome you because you are doing what is right, they get to feel at that moment what it is to be the love of God in the world, and there's no better reward than that. So uh, as we chew on this text, the good and the bad news, um, I ask and I encourage all of us to ask for God's strength to have the courage um, to not live so that I can be the cool kid, you know, so that I can be the one that all the right people like. But instead, um, that God will fill us with the Spirit so that we can go out and be the love of Christ in the flesh for people and let those, that way of living, let that way of living reveal to us our new family. And, um, and live in the joy of being in that family that is created by God. Amen.
two, three, four.
Let us pray together. A good and gracious God opens our hearts and minds as we welcome others into our lives, as we are the love of God in our daily routines, in our families, in our neighborhoods, in our communities, in our city and state, our nation and world. Help us to seek out and welcome those who, who are different than us, who are on the edges of society, those who desperately need to know of your love and your grace and your mercy. And help us to be opened in our hearts and minds to be welcomed by others, to let your love shine through their acts of kindness to us. Lord, we pray for this world. We to pray for this pandemic. We pray for our state as more and more cases every day. We pray for all those who are suffering from this virus, all those who are taking care of those, all those who are on the front lines. We pray for the vulnerable, those who are in high-risk categories, that they remain safe and healthy from this virus. Give us guidance and help us to do the things that we need to do, each and every one of us need to do, to stay healthy and help keep each other healthy. Lord, we pray for our governors and our mayors and our president and the world leaders and everyone in our governments that have to make hard decisions. And we pray that your guidance, your judgment, and your peace that passes all human understanding guard their hearts and minds as they make these decisions. Lord, we come before you with many things on our hearts and minds. You promise to hear our prayers and you tell us to come to you in prayer to bring our joys, to bring our concerns. And you always promise to be here and to hear them. So Lord, now we bring all of our concerns to you, all those people that were praying for you, and we lift them up to you either out loud or silently in our hearts. Pray for Didge and Anna. Lord, we pray that your will be done in the lives that we pray for. We pray that your will be done in our lives as well. All these prayers we lift up to you, trusting in your mercy through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. At this time, we will be celebrating Holy Communion together. So if you don't have your communion elements, please get them and bring them by you. Place them by you at this time. Each time we gather as God's people and, and take of this holy meal, we remember we receive God's grace and forgiveness uh, through the sacraments, and that is what we receive through this meal together. And we remember then a night in which he's betrayed, our Lord Jesus had a meal with his friends, and at that meal he took bread and he gave thanks and he broke it. He gave it to him to eat, saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup. Again, he gave thanks. He gave it all to drink, saying, This cup is a new promise poured out by my blood for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Let's pray the prayer our Lord taught us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And save us from the time of trial. And deliver us from evil. 
for the kingdom and power and glory are yours now and forever. Amen. These are God's gifts for us, God's people. All are welcome to come and partake of this holy meal. Please commune each other as you give the bread, say body of Christ given for you, or the wine and grape juice, blood of Christ shed for you. We will commune each other as you commune each other at home. But know this, all who are hungry and thirsty, come eat and drink. The table is set and you are welcome. It's the body of Christ given for you. Body of Christ given for you. Blood of Christ shed for you. Body of Christ given for you. Blood of Christ shed for you. It's the body of Christ given for you. Amen. It's the blood of Christ shed for you. Amen. Body of Christ given for you. Amen. Blood of Christ Amen. shed for you. Amen. We continue to prepare for in-person worship, which we will be beginning uh, next weekend on July 4th and 5th. Uh, we're going to have our normal uh, weekend services except for our Sunday night service at Melbourne Beach. So there'll be a service at 5 o'clock on Saturday night at our Suntree campus, one at 9 a.m. at our Suntree campus, which is our contemporary service, and 11 o'clock at our Suntree campus, which is our traditional service. It'll also be a nine o'clock Melbourne Beach campus traditional service. There are some, a bunch of guidelines and things to know before you come that was sent out in the weekly email. And there's also a video uh, on our website and Facebook page as well of all the guidelines uh, as we go and meet in person. We continue to have these worship recordings as well for those uh, who will not be coming to in-person worship. And they, again, will be available at the normal time, late Saturday or early Sunday morning. So continue to watch our website and Facebook pages and our weekly emails for more information. Receive God's blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you God's peace. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. One, two, three, four.
We are followers of Jesus Christ for the sake of the world. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. We will. Two, three. And if God is.